Well, definitely Germany did because they come in at number 10 with their GSG-9. The GSG-9 is a German Special Operations Unit of the German Federal Police. Now, it was officially established in the year 1973 after the mismanagement of the German police to successfully free 11 Israeli athletes who were actually kidnapped in Munich during the Summer Olympic Games that year. Now, the GSG-9 is deployed in certain situations like hostage taking, kidnapping, as well as extortion. It also used to be used to secure locations as well as neutralize targets and track down fugitives and even sometimes conduct sniper operations. Now the units are very active in developing and testing new methods and tactics for their missions. From the year 1972 to 2003, they reportedly completed over 1500 missions. And the thing is, they only had to use their weapons five times to accomplish those missions. The Special Operations Unit of Spain comes in at number nine, and these guys are another one of the best special forces in the entire world. Known since 2009, the UOE, which is based on their Spanish initials, or the Naval Special Warfare Force, has long been one of the most respected special forces in all of Europe. The UOE is given the task of special operations in the maritime, coastal, and inland environments, and it was established as a volunteer amphibious climbing company unit back in the year 1952 and since then has become a very fierce elite fighting force. Poland's Grom comes in at number 8. This is a Polish elite counter-terrorism unit and they're known for their speed, precision, as well as deadly force. They're in the same league as the British SAS. Well, of course, all these special forces are pretty much in the same league. They're all intense. But this special force specifically was created with the same principles of the British SAS. Having worked worked also with the SEALs many times, they are rumored to have given special training ideas to the SEALs as well. Now the Grom Force is estimated to have about 270 to 300 men and each of them has to pass a very tough series of psychological and physical durability tests. And it ain't easy making that cut. And now speaking of the British SAS, they come in at number seven. SAS, by the way, stands for Special Air Service. Now they are the basis for these special forces all around the world, pretty much. Even the US Delta Forces were actually formed after the founder spent some time with the SAS. Their insignia has the phrase, who dares, wins. The SAS was set up in the year 1941 during the Second World War and they have served for a model for special forces all around the world. It was reformed as part of the Territorial Army in the year 1947 and it was named the 21st Battalion SAS Regiment. Now the regular army 22 SAS gained worldwide fame and recognition after successfully attacking the Iranian Embassy in London and rescuing hostages during the 1980 Iranian Embassy siege. They have gone through a lot of changes and different tasks that they've been given but primarily now they're made up of two regiments one for dealing with counterterrorism and another one for dealing with peacetime and special operations in wartime at number six we have the Seyret Matkal of Israel Israel Seyret Matkal is another one of the world's elite forces now its primary purpose is intelligence gathering as well as it often operates deep behind enemy lines during the selection period new potential recruits have to deal with hardcore training exercises while being constantly monitored by doctors and psychologists. Only the strongest get into this force. Here we have Marcos of India. Marcos is short for Marine Commandos and they're equipped with the best assault rifles, sniper rifles, all the best real-time war equipment. So the Indian Marcos, they are one of the deadliest special forces in the entire world. They do not play around. They're primarily trained along the same lines of the US Navy SEALs. Now, one of the most interesting things about their training program is the high motivation that's found in the members, as well as their emotional training in addition to their physical training. And they have each other's back. Number four, we have the National Gendarmerie Intervention Group of France. Now, of all the special forces in the world, few can compete with these guys. Shields and firearms. These police officers are not here to negotiate. An attacker is inside a supermarket. The first minutes are crucial. The intervention has to be immediate. 
Their initials are G-I-G-N, and this group is about 200 men strong, and they're trained specifically to respond to hostage situations. Now, they claim to have freed over 600 people since they were formed all the way back in 1973. Now, it's against French law to publish pictures of their faces, so we don't really know who's a member of this force. But one of the biggest missions known in GIGN's history is a seizure of the Grand Mosque in Mecca back in 1979. Because of prohibitions on non-Muslims to enter the Holy City, there was a team of three GIGN commandos who briefly converted to Islam. Yeah, they convinced people that they were real Muslims. They went through the whole conversion process and everything, all done before helping the Saudi armed forces to plan and recapture the mosque. Alpha Group of Russia is at number three. The Alpha Group is an arm of the well-known Spetsnaz, and the Alpha Group is very fierce in their own right. <laughs> Мы должны поразить одну мишень, раз два, вторую мишень. They started in the mid-1970s and they came to the limelight during the invasion of Afghanistan. Now they're known for their brutal vengeance and heartless taking down of the opponent. But like I said, you know, these groups are intense and this one is especially because they actually came under heavy criticism during the 2002 Moscow theater hostage crisis when in order to knock out militants, what the Alpha Group did was use chemical gas which led to the killing of 129 hostage, all as collateral damage. So yeah, they went a little too far in that one. Number two brings us the SSG or the Special Service Group of Pakistan. Now they're the main special force unit of the Pakistan army and they're also known as the Black Storks and it was formed back in the year 1956 when they based a lot of their initial training and orientation on the United States Special Forces. The SSG has its headquarters in Turbala Cantonment and it's divided into eight battalions with their leader being a major general. Now the SSGs, they're pretty similar to the US Army Special Forces as well as the British Army's SAS. They've done a lot of training together as well. But Specifically for the SSG, their training reportedly includes a 36 mile march that needs to be completed in 12 hours as well as a 5 mile run in 50 minutes all wearing full gear. But the number one special force is the United States Navy SEALs. So United States Navy SEALs is arguably the best special forces ever created. They were created back in the year 1962, and the SEALs are trained to operate in every single environment. So that's what SEAL stands for, sea, air, and land. They need to go through years of training and endure a fast-paced training process also on top of that, many foreign militaries base their special operations forces on the SEALs. Special Warfare Operators, or SOs, is a collective group of Navy SEALs. We train to jump, we train to dive, swim, come out of the water, fight on land, and do anything in between. The SEALs are an all-male special forces unit, and definitely they prove time and time again why they are the number one special force in the world. Starting at number 10, we have the China's People's Liberation Army. China's army has to go through a 17-step obstacle course that includes swimming, climbing, and leaping over or through objects that are set on fire. Now, even if you do it perfectly or you're in good physical condition, you know, the training is pretty intense. Like, it's gonna destroy you. Like not exactly though, but like you're gonna feel it. So candidates, they're required to also hold their breath underwater for one minute. And if they even try to come up for a second to get a little bit of air, boom, nope, they're dunked right back down. You gotta stay there for a minute. Don't try to extend that minute. Moving on to number nine, we have India's National Security Guard Commandos, or the NSG. Organizations within India's armed forces, they test potential soldiers by giving them only a day's worth of food and water, and then they're left in a remote place like a jungle to survive and find their way back. Now, that's just an entry-level test for India's NSG. Some are so determined to join the NSG that they actually finish with food and water left over just to impress the people that are testing them. One training method also requires candidates to get beats 
from local people as an endurance test. And there's another test that they have to pass where they need to pass target practice while drunk. And this is to simulate firing your weapon under unusual conditions. Now we know the Russia Spetsnaz had to be in this episode. So the training and the selection process for the Spetsnaz is a long five year process. Now the first five months alone are designed to break recruits and then build them back up so they're willing to perform tactics that their superiors want them to perform. But the good thing though for Spetsnaz is that their operatives get to select their own non-commissioned officers from within their ranks instead of letting their superiors make that choice for them during the review process. But their training tactics are kept really, really hush-hush. We don't know too much about them, but we just know it's really intense. Number seven, we have Australia's Special Air Service Regiment. Now there's one aspect of their training called resistance to interrogation. Now one actual operative described the experience of the training and said that a white bag was put on his head and then he was stripped and taken to a cell. And then he was put in stress positions for hours and deprived of sleep. So if he even started to doze off or even looked like he was even thinking about dozing off slightly, he was slapped back to remain awake for three days straight. Now the Special Air Service Regiment has not disclosed all of their training methods, but apparently more people have lost their lives training to join them than actual recruits that were sent on real operations. US oh. Navy SEALs is up next at number six. So perhaps the most popular group in this episode, we see the Navy SEALs everywhere, in media, in the video games, all of that. But while their 30 month average training program is only about half of what the Spetsnaz is, it condenses a lot of intensity into one week during the first three weeks called Hell Week. After that, the plebes head to their dorm at Bancroft Hall What's your company? and assemble on an area known as Red Beach, tasked with teaching proper protocol to the plebes. Now study and know the entire chain of command, do you understand me? These are the ones that we're going to serve with in the future and they want them to be the best that they can possibly be. Now on four hours of sleep, candidates, they have to spend five and a half days constantly covered in mud and in the cold, performing training exercises on coastal environments, as well as paddling and doing extreme exercises and fighting just to stay awake among other things. Now the crazy part is that their trainers yell at them to quit and they taunt them by eating and drinking food in front of them. However, although the training is intense, there is emergency medical staff that's available all the time, you know, just in case. At number five, we have the Israeli Shea Tet. Now over the course of 20 months, they must go through training and diving under extreme cold conditions with no visibility, power drop operations, demolitions, and more. And now those who qualify are then assigned to air, sea, and land operations based on which one they did the best in. Now, trainees are also sent out on real missions in pretty much the worst possible circumstances. The Shayatad also has medical personnel on hand at all times. Because yeah, the training is so intense, anything could happen. Moving on to number four, we have the South Korean Special Warfare Command. Now, this training course goes on for 10 days, and while they're there, they experience training in low temperatures because they train outside. They don't even wear shirts for their training. They have to run and do sit-ups and even wrestle each other in freezing snow. That's probably the worst thing I've ever heard of for a training exercise in this whole episode or just in general. Now here's the thing though, everyone also needs to have a black belt in Taekwondo, but you know, that's the easy part. These guys should have been number one, they're training outside in the snow without shirts. <laughs> The training at number three is UK Special Air Service. Candidates for the SAS, they're dumped in the middle of nowhere and told to cover 40 miles in 20 hours while carrying a 60 pound weight and rifle. Hold it. Keep it there. Go. Everything you've got, 20 this. Come on, everything you've got. Boys, boys, there's, there's no way of getting through. Also, they have no food except just a bottle of water with them. Now their uniforms and their boots are chosen to not fit them. Like this is done 
purposely. Now, for those who actually complete it in the time that's required, they then have to perform a four mile run only in half an hour. Now, here we have the Pakistani Special Services Group or the SSG coming in at number two. Now, these guys, of course, are very, very, very intense and hardcore. Pakistan puts their trainees through an endurance run on a stricter timeline than the UK does. Now, after two years of service in the regular Pakistani military, a service member is then eligible for SSG selection. During an eight month training period, soldiers are required to cover 36 miles of territory in only 12 hours. And then they have to run five miles in 45 minutes with a full pack. Now, at the end of the eight months, SSG candidates have to perform seven para drops and five of them are done during the day and two of them are done at night. Now then after that, they proceed to the advanced commando training. And that's where they have to spend half of a year doing commando training. And when that's complete, they get to join the SSG. But guys, we've seen some intense training, but number one definitely is the United Kingdom's Gurkhas. Because of their living conditions already, like the Nepalese people who apply for this British military group, they're subjected to punishing tests. And this is even before they can even think of applying. But either way, the initial tests are pretty basic. They have some running and pull-up exercises, and then comes the real testing. So recruits are required to run five kilometers while wearing a 25 kilogram weight and those five kilometers they come with a 400 meter rise in incline and done through a very rocky and dusty terrain which has to be done in only 45 minutes this is so unfair like we've done videos about the Nepalese Gurkha before so we know that they're a very hardcore group but what the UK puts them through, it's pretty much impossible. You pretty much failed before you even started. Nevertheless, the Nepalese are so determined that some of them definitely make it through. How? I do not know. But now let's just jump into the intelligence agencies. Starting at number 10, we have the Ministry of State Security, or the MSS. China's main foreign intelligence agency is shrouded in mystery. Unlike most other intelligence agencies, it does not have any official website, and the exact location of its headquarters is completely unknown. It became more noticeable recently when a couple of Chinese nationals were arrested for stealing trade secrets and technologies from several other countries. These nationals were believed to be spies of the MSS and the MSS benefits from close ties not only with the government but also private tech companies because they have large data mining capabilities. At number nine we have Australian Secret Intelligence Service or the ASIS headquartered in Canberra, Australia. It mainly deals with foreign intelligence as well as it coordinates with other intelligence agencies from different countries. And one of the most notable involvements of the ASIS S was in Papua New Guinea nearly 30 years ago. Allegedly, the ASIS had been trying to suppress independence movements in the country, and the agency was also involved in the September 1973 Chilean coup. Number eight brings us to the Foreign Intelligence Service, or the SVR. The Foreign Intelligence Service is a civilian foreign intelligence agency of the Russian Federation. The SVR is responsible for gathering intelligence outside of the country, and they also run military and economic espionage as well as conduct electronic surveillance in foreign countries and works close with the military foreign intelligence agency in Russia. And the SVR is headquartered in Moscow. Mossad comes in in the number seven spot. Israel is located in probably the most hostile geopolitical area in the entire world. Now to protect itself, Israel created one of the most powerful intelligence agencies. Now Mossad was created in 1949 and because no law actually defines its exact purpose or its objective, or its roles or the type of missions that it conducts. It's completely exempt from constitutional laws of the state of Israel. So Mossad has been described as a deep state. The intelligence agency is one of three in Israel. At number six, Canadian Security Intelligence Service, or the CSIS as it's called. This agency is based in Ottawa, Ontario, Canada. And CSIS collects information from around the world as well as it weeds out any sort of threats that could happen to Canadian citizens. Its duties include gathering intelligence, running covert operations, as well as advising the government on certain security threats. CSIS is also Canada's representative in the five I which is an intelligence alliance between the United States, Canada, the United Kingdom, Australia, as well as New Zealand. And the Five Eyes is considered to be one of the most extensive espionage alliances 
ever created. Halfway in at number 5 we have the Directorate General for External Security and that's the DGSE. Now this is the external intelligence agency of France that operates under the direction of the French Ministry of Defense. The agency works with the DCRI which is the Central Directorate of Interior Intelligence and it engages in a large amount of economic espionage and also performs paramilitary and counterintelligence operations in various different countries. Moving on now to number 4 we have the Research and Analysis wing or the RAW over in India. Now don't be fooled by the agency's name. The research and analysis wing is one of the most powerful intelligence agencies out there. Formed in the year 1968 to handle foreign intelligence, the RAW protects India from all sorts of threats and monitors matters in other countries which could actually affect India. Now not much is known about the activities and the past operations because they are so secretive and the agency regularly communicates with other agencies especially in regard to monitoring Pakistan's nuclear program. Speaking of Pakistan, they come next, Inter-Service Intelligence Agency or the ISI. Reportedly, the ISI has zero defectors or double agents so far and it's also known for being very thorough in gathering evidence. They're also said to be the largest in size in terms of total employees. It was created back in the year 1948 and the ISI is the eyes of the Pakistan military. Also, these guys are very secretive of course but it's rumored that they're spending millions on pro-Pakistan political parties as well as buying out important lawmakers from around the world. Now number two we have the Secret Intelligence Service or the SIS. Now this is the Foreign Intelligence Agency of the United Kingdom. Commonly known as the MI6, they gather and analyze information from overseas. It focuses on information related to a variety of threats and the MI6 or the SIS, whichever term you want to use, was formed more than a hundred years years ago, making it one of the oldest intelligence agencies in the world. Alright guys, so before I reveal what the number one most powerful intelligence agency is, I want to let you know about how you can have more control of your privacy and security with Surfshark. Surfshark is a VPN service that makes online privacy protection easy and achievable. Surfshark encrypts all internet traffic sent to you and from your devices and ensures that your IP address remains completely hidden to make sure that nobody can see what you do online. And one of my favorite things about Surfshark is that unlike other VPN services, you can use it on as many devices as you want to at the exact same time. They also have this cool feature called blind search where you can search the internet without being tracked and no ads being shown to you. I use Surfshark for traveling. Like I go to the United States a lot as well as I have family in Jamaica. And for my business, I need to be connected to the internet all the time. And Surfshark saves on mobile roaming data as well as it has websites load faster because they block ads. And now most of my purchases are also done online so it protects my credit card information when I'm in public and also hides and protects the passwords on my bank accounts and social media networks from hackers. And when I'm not working, it lets me access content from Netflix as well as other sites by simply switching the location of the country on my phone or laptop. And for all of you in the FTD Facts family, I'm hooking you guys up with an exclusive deal. So click the link below in the video description section. And if you go to surfshark.deals slash FTD and you use my promo code FTD that gets you 83% off and three additional months for free. Yeah, I want you guys to try out Surfshark for yourself with my exclusive limited time deal. Okay guys so it's time for me to reveal the number one most powerful intelligence agency and that is the Central Intelligence Agency, the CIA. The Central Intelligence Agency is the foreign intelligence agency of the United States. Now it's the most popular and easily recognizable intelligence agency agency in the entire world, largely due to its numerous appearances in movies and TV shows. Everybody knows the CIA. They were formed back in the year 1947 and the agency monitors overseas developments that might threaten the United States. They also handle counterintelligence and cyber warfare. The CIA also runs covert paramilitary operations. The CIA has a track record for getting the job done and coordinating with many of the other top agencies in the entire world. So yeah, number five, the S SSG Pakistan. The SSG is a special operations force of the Pakistan Army. The SSG was created in 1956 and are also known as the Black Storks. The unit was specially trained to perform asymmetric warfare, foreign internal defense, special operations, hostage rescue, among other things within and outside of Pakistan. 
Their training regimen includes a 36 mile trek in 12 hours and a 5 mile run that needs to be completed in 50 minutes, all while wearing full gear. Moving on to number 4, we have the GSG-9 in Germany. This special operations unit is not only used for special operations, but also for hostage operations and many others. The GSG was formed in 1973 after the mismanagement of the Munich Olympic Games kidnapping incident where 11 Israeli team members were taken hostage. Today, it has more than 1,900 people in operation. It's also not just a military group, but also a special unit of the German Federal Police. Only one in five make it through the training phase. Halfway through this video, at number three is the Delta Force in the United States. So the Delta Force is dedicated to hostage rescue, as well as counterinsurgency and general counterinsurgency. Their full name is the First Special Forces Operational Detachment Delta. The Delta Force is one of the most powerful special mission units under the United States Army. The force was founded in the year 1977. Although their actions are highly classified, we know that they were involved in the Gulf War, the Somali Civil War, and the Yugoslav War, the war in Afghanistan, as well as the Iraq War. The Delta Force has an intense approval process that tests candidates based on physicality and psychology and around 12 to 14 people out of 240 get through it. And all of that happens before the training officially is started. At number two, we have the SAS in the United Kingdom. That stands for the Special Air Service. The SAS is the ground counterpart to the Special Boat Service. In an SAS team, there's usually a trooper trained to communicate with uh, attack aircrafts and guide them into airstrikes. So they strategically use communication with the aircrafts to their advantage when going on missions. On their insignia, it says, Who Dares Win? It was created back in the year 1941 during the Second World War, and they serve as a role model in a sense for the whole world. Its primary task is dealing with counterterrorism during peacetime and special combat operations during the war. They have performed countless successful operations during the years, especially during World War II. Now we got at number one, the U.S. Navy SEALs. So the U.S. Navy SEALs are arguably the top special force operations force in the whole world. Created in 1962, the Sea, Air, Land, SEAL operations go through years of training and especially after 9-11, they have been very, very, very active. Probably the most recent, most well-known success of this unit was the mission ending the life of Osama bin Laden and many foreign militaries based their special ops on the U.S. Navy SEALs. The first intelligence agency I'm going to feature is Mossad. Mossad is based in Israel and it was formed in December 13th, 1949. Its headquarters is Tel Aviv, Israel, and it has an estimated amount of 1,200 employees. Mossad is considered one of the best and most advanced intelligence agencies in the world. This Israeli intelligence agency, along with its counterpart, Amman, for military intelligence, and Shimbet for international security, forms one of the most powerful intelligence communities in the whole world. Mossad's focus is on Arab organizations and countries. In fact, Mossad's operations are so secretive that it's one of the most difficult agencies in the world to locate. Okay, now next up we have the FSB in Russia. This agency was formed on April 12, 1995, and its headquarters is in Moscow, Russia. It's estimated that there's 300,000 employees in this agency. So you can call the FSB, or the Federal Security Bureau of the Russian Federation, the main successor of the controversial USSR State Security Committee, the KGB. The FSB mainly focuses on internal problems, as well as the economic and social aspects of political stability in the country. This is all in addition to counterintelligence, internal and border security, as well as counterterrorism. Now, due to its performance in recent years, it's considered one of the most popular agencies in the world. Okay, so you guys knew that this one had to be in this episode, and that's MI6 in the UK. 
The MI6 was formed in 1909 and its headquarters is the SIS building in London, UK. It's estimated that there are about 3,200 employees in this agency. So yes, the MI6 is one of the most elite intelligence agencies across the globe. MI6 stands for Military Intelligence Section 6, and the organization was formed to initiate and control secret intelligence operations on behalf of the British government. MI6 is one of the oldest intelligence agencies in the world, having been formed over 100 years ago, and since its formation, MI6 has been involved in the World War I, as well as World War II, the Cold War, and several wars in the 21st century. An interesting fact, the MI6 building has also been featured in two James Bond movies. Next up, we have the ISI in Pakistan. And now we actually did a video dedicated to the ISI, so you might want to check it out. It's probably going to be in one of these cards in this episode, or if not, probably, I don't know, I'll link to it in this video description. Now this agency was formed in 1948 and its headquarters is in Islamabad, Pakistan. ISI stands for Inter-Services Intelligence and it's the premier intelligence agency in Pakistan, responsible for gathering, processing, and analyzing national security information from around the world. The ISI is very well organized, initially created for valuable information sharing between the three branches of the Pakistani military force. The role of the ISI evolved a lot over time and it's become a full-time intelligence collecting agency on a global scale. With thousands of employees, the ISI is made up of a mix of army officers, some retired, as well as civilians. And the final most powerful intelligence agency in the world that I'm going to be featuring is the CIA of the United States. CIA was formed on September 18th, 1947, and its headquarters is in Langley, Fairfax County in Virginia, United States. It's estimated that there's 21,575 employees working with the CIA. And of course, CIA is one of the most famous foreign intelligence agencies in the world. They're referenced all the time in movies, TV shows, as well as in articles on the internet. And the CIA is tasked for operating, gathering, and analyzing security information across the globe. It was created in 1947 as a result of the Pearl Harbor attacks at the end of World War II. Now, over the years, the agency had received a lot of negative attention for gathering intel through human intelligence, example, via interpersonal contact, often without compliance or consent. Then the CIA increased massively in size after the 9-11 attacks, and it regained a lot of its prestige after the mission that ended the life of Osama bin Laden.